And so I will uh, introduce Jeff Marks this evening. Um, Jeff is our Google guru, and he's going to help us try to navigate some of our Google questions. So I will turn it over to Jeff Marks, who was so graciously volunteered by his wife, Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. So it's all yours. Um, I will mention before Jeff starts, um, we're gonna mute everyone. And if you have a question for Jeff, if you can use the raise the hand feature and we'll make sure that um, Jeff gets to you. All right, good evening, everyone. I hope I can live up to the uh, title of guru. I've never done this before, never done an online instruction. Uh, I had some ideas just talking with Amanda, talking with Brenda the other night about what we should cover since Google is vast and there are a lot of things you can do. Most things you don't need to do for whatever job you have. One thing I was going to do though, and I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. There we go. All right. One thing that came up just now was, first of all, can everyone see my Google page? Yes, no. I'm not hearing anyone. Yes. OK. All right. Here's my home page. Now, right now, I am logged in to a device I got through my employer. I can only log into it using my work account. This is the icon for my work account right here, so, which means I'm logged into Chrome under that. This is my district account. I have personal accounts linked here anytime I want to. This is my personal account. This is the one I use for business. This is the one I'm using tonight. So that, that switched me over here. But since I'm logged into Chrome still under my master account, anytime I open a new tab, it goes back to that. We've had problems at school with teachers and students who have had trouble getting things to cooperate with each other. And it's usually because they're logged into one account, but they're trying to do something other and under another one. So that's something that I have to remind myself of as well. But for the purposes of what we're doing tonight, all right, there again, I'm opening up a new tab and it goes back to that. I'm gonna go back to my personal account that I'm using everything else for. What I was going to do is do a little walkthrough regarding Google Forms, how to create one, how to share it, how to collect data from it, shall we say. What I'm going to do though, in the interest of time, since we don't have a lot of time, I'm going to go to one that I already created earlier today. I tested it out with Amanda to make sure it worked. All right. Well, this is the basic exit survey I made using the forms. And what you're seeing here is what you see as the header of the document. Folks on the other end don't see that. Once it loads up, you'll see everything. Um, it defaults to this. Whatever you put in the title, it defaults to it is the document title. You can change it if you want. You can insert photos. This little bar follows you down as you go. This one right here is a multiple choice. But if you open it up, you can do check boxes. You can do a drop down menu. You can upload files from elsewhere. You can add pictures or videos. You can do a short answer, long answer. You can do date and time. Nice thing is, once you're doing this at home, it's like any other document. Until you share it with anyone, it's totally private. But I just made a bunch of silly questions to sort of show what it, what it can do. Check all that apply. This is the, an example of checks right here. Also, 
one thing you can do is down here where it says required, you can go in here in settings. You can collect emails. This is especially important if you're collecting customer feedback, for example. If you want to be able to contact them, you can do response requests. You can turn this off if you don't want. And let's see. Uh, we're not going to mess with that. There are ways to make this a quiz. If you're a teacher, you can have it, you can assign grade point values to each thing, but we're not going to worry about that. When the heck were you here? Well, that's month, date, year. This is a calendar option. How much did you enjoy your visit? Drop down. Please rate our parking. This is an example of a linear scale. You can do a scale of one to two, one to five, one to 10, assign values depending on where they are. This is a short answer text. Please use the space below to rant about our services much like you will later on Yelp. Down here we have a long answer text. Please, us, please let us know how we could have improved your stay. Hold nothing back. We aim to please. Tell us where you live, short answer. Now, if you ever want to see what the customer would see, you can hit preview. This is what they would see. Title, picture, email, asterisk, meaning it's required. You can have every question default to required, to not required. You can change it as you go. But how much did you enjoy your visit? Drop down. Please rate our, oh, see, and if you skip it, it reminds you. Please rate our parking, one and two. You can do a scale. You can fill stuff in. This is not mandatory, so there's no asterisk. And this is an embedded video, which we're not going to watch in its entirety because you probably don't want to see that. This is basically just me playing around with features to sort of, I guess, reacquaint myself with them. Because if you're anything like me, you learn best out of necessity. You might pick up a tricks here and there just tinkering, but usually you learn something best when you absolutely have to do it. If your job requires it, you'll figure out a way. So if we go back to this up here, I sent this to Amanda in two different ways because I wanted to test it. I got two different responses from her. Nice thing is you can have it automatically link to sheets. It'll create a sheet with a default title of what's called, and will automatically put answers for each question. These are the things Amanda this one's a specialty choice. Now, back here. The nice thing about this is you retain sole editorial privileges on it. When you send a copy out, all any all the recipients can do is just fill it out. So if you go to send, you can either send via email, it'll default to that. You just enter the email address there. It defaults to I've invited you to fill out a form, but you can change it. You can change the subject if you'd like, although it defaults to the title of the form. You can include the form in the email or you can send them a link, like say, this is what the link is, shorten URL, just makes it a little more palatable. You can copy the link and then just put it in an email, especially if you wanna send someone a longer message. This is what you would use if you wanted to embed the form in something else. Like see, for example, you could post it to a Facebook page. You could share via Twitter. That actually brings me to one of the questions I received from someone as follows. Can Google Forms be integrated into Instagram and how? Like an order form on Instagram, for example. This is a very good question because I do not know Instagram at all. I have never before used it. So perhaps. 
Jeff, before you go to that part, um, can you repeat how you got to Google Forms? How you created that that survey? Answer question book that. And this does a step by step walkthrough on how to do that. And again, because I've never used Instagram myself, this information makes sense to me theoretically, but it's never anything I've applied. So that might be something y'all can do because I don't know how much you use social media in your jobs. I know Amanda sometimes does. Um, they wanted you to go back through um, how you got to Google Forms. Like, show how you. Stand by, Amanda's talking to me. Um, how you got to Google Forms. Oh, you mean how I got to forms initially? Yes. Ah, okay. There we go. Okay, she's asking how we got to forms initially. Again, I wanna make sure I'm under the correct account. Again, this is the master account, the default account. This is the one I use to log into Chrome itself. These other accounts are just simply linked. So again, make sure I'm in this. Then if you go to this little pattern here, we got in the habit of calling it the waffle, but you can call it whatever you want. This will take you to Google apps. These are the apps that come free with every Google account. Anyone can use them, which is the beauty of it. Up top, you'll see the most commonly used apps, Maps, YouTube, Gmail, Google Drive. Google Drive is wonderful. It's basically a free hard drive you get with every Google account, and it's very generous as to how much space they give you. You're really only gonna come close to filling that up if you download lots of videos and stuff like that. But you would simply scroll down. Uh, and Forms just happens to be at the bottom. But if you don't see, you can go to more from Google and find whatever you need. So if you go to Forms, what it will do is take you to the main Forms page. Now, what I used to create this exit survey that I showed you earlier, I just went to a blank form. And that just let me enter a title, enter a subtitle, enter a photo, and then enter as many different questions as I wanted. But they also have templates. If you wanted just to send a party invite and didn't feel like building one from scratch, you can just open one up. It's the, it's the, Fault in background, but you can change that if you'd like. Um, uh, this is especially poetic right here. If you want to just uh, play with the minds of the recipients, just leave that there and let them figure it out. What is your name? All right. Now it defaults to not being required, but if you want to know who's coming, you can make it required. You can do short answer. You can do paragraph if someone wants to really go into detail as to what their name is. You can do multiple choice. You can give them, my name is John or other and leave it at that. Can you attend? Yes, I'll be there. Sorry, I can't make it nice and straightforward. Or you can add another option. Oh, wait a minute. All right, you can add that if you'd like. How many of you are attending? Once again, it defaults to short answer, but you can change the type of question it is. You can make it multiple choice, check boxes, there you go, option one, one, option two, two. Now I see it anticipated what you were gonna say, but you could change it to anything you want. You could put 22, anything like that. Let's say you wanted to put a, just put a picture in for fun. There we go. We'll go to my Google Drive. Again, it defaults to the Google Drive of whatever account you're logged into. That's a Google folder. Now, 
it's not just a party. It's a block social. So it defaults to left align. You can center it if that's too big. You can change the size of it. You do, after all, want to make people know that you are throwing a special shindig, not just any old party. Once again, this little menu here follows you down as you scroll. Since you used a template that was already available in Google Forms, you can just use the questions they give you. What, are, what will you be bringing? Oh, you don't have to bring anything. Nope, don't need that one. You can delete it. Do you have any allergies? Okay, that's an important question. Okay, short answer text. What is your email address? All right, again, short answer, but you're gonna need to know that, so you gotta make it required, for example. But you could put a video in there if you wanted. Let's say you already did something from another form and you really don't want to do it again. You can import. I can take something from the exit survey I showed you before and bring it right over. Now, since we just made this, and I hadn't done with it what I did before. Oh, and you can also see what the recipients will see if you click the little I. This is how it would look for them. All right, responses. Okay, nobody's responded yet because you haven't sent it to anyone yet. All right, but, oh, wait a minute. Oh, this is another helpful thing, get email notifications. Anytime someone responds, you get a notification in your inbox in Gmail. Very helpful, all right? And you can download the responses later, but, okay. I wanna put everyone's responses on a spreadsheet so I can how many, find how many people are named John and how many are named other. All right, create a new spreadsheet or you can select an existing spreadsheet if you wanna add on to something you've already done. It's gonna to default to the title of the form you can hit create. I'm not gonna create another spreadsheet because nobody's on there anyway, but it'll look like this one that I showed you with the responses to the exit survey. So yeah, anytime, let's see, we're just gonna go away from that. Just a moment. The other thing I was going to cover a little bit, and feel free to interrupt, chime in. Right now, I've got uh, I've got the other screen minimized, so I can't see chat. So feel free to interrupt if you have something else you'd like to ask. But the only other question I got is, I've been trying to create the schedule for the concierge team utilizing Google Calendar. Concierge may change from day to day. Is there a way in Calendar to create a drop down? so that there's a choice to select an employee for each shift. Also, sometimes the calendars don't change month to month. Can you carry the information from one month to another? Okay, I'm gonna get out of these, first of all. Open a new tab. Once again, it defaulted back to my master account. But when I open calendar, I want to make sure I'm in this account. So I'm going to again hit the little waffle and find the icon for calendar. Everybody gets one of these, even if you never use it. So when you click calendar, it opens your calendar. Default to today's date. I have the week view, but of course you can change it if you want, day, week, month, year, however you see fit. I guess it depends on how busy your schedule is and how much detail you need. Now the aforementioned box social, well, here it is. That's an event I already created. Conveyance is not provided. You must bring your own bicycle. All right, now I've already created it, but I can edit it. I can invite guests. I can modify the event. 
oh, this makes it so guests can modify the event. Usually you don't want them to do that, but hey, it is your party. So if you want folks to change the rules, c'est la vie. All right. You can change the time, change the duration, change the date. It will default to does not repeat. It will assume that whatever party you're throwing is a one in a lifetime thing. But say you're going to throw a party every Wednesday, weekly on Wednesday, save the changes. All right, now we're back to my calendar. So we go to next week. Ah, look, another box social. So with regard to the question here about calendars not changing month to month, I'm not really sure if that was a question regarding recurring events, making sure they show up month to month, because unless I change the events, the original event, it, this is gonna show up every week. I'm gonna go back to today. edit it, change it back to once and does not repeat. Because I have only have it in me to throw so many box socials a month. So there you go, it's not there anymore. But something to do with access and as the owner of this calendar and the owner of any event I create within the calendar, it's up to me with whom I share it. Now, if you're a supervisor, if you need to retain editorial privileges over events that even other people put in the calendar, the only real way to do that is to share your calendars with each other. Nice thing, to, nice thing about that is if it gets too cluttered, you can remove them from your view. For example, there's a super secret meeting taking place in the hidden liquor closet behind the GM's desk that he doesn't think we know about. Perhaps the creator of this event was not as discreet as he thought he was. Ah, the creator of the event is me. I'm gonna show you what I did here. I created a calendar within my other Google account right there. All right, this was the email alert I got in my in this account once I shared it. I'm going to show you something. This is interesting. This is goes back to the linked accounts thing I showed you before. Let's say I hadn't already added this calendar. I go to add this calendar. It opens up calendar. It opens up that calendar. Calendar I didn't want to open up. Once again, this is my master one, but Oh, wait a minute. Nope, we're going to cancel that because I don't want to add that. What I do want to add it to is that one. Now, since I've already added it, it should pop up and sh tell me that I've already added it. Yeah, this calendar already exists. Okay. But let's say this guy, this other version of me, I'm not sure which one of us is Tyler Durden. Let's say this guy just has all events all over the place and it's getting too cluttered. Now notice he color coded it. So I can see at a glance that, nope, nope, nope. I can see at a glance that it was him and not me. Well, I can just uncheck it. Oh, hang on, Yuva. Ah, and look at that. That's my little alert saying the box social is starting soon. All right, by unchecking that, that removes it from here, doesn't delete it. I can always check it back and there it is. That's the best way to organize calendars or organize events that are created by other people in other calendars. Now the way I can do it right now, I'm in this one. So let's see, and this is mine right here, J Marks. Oh, I don't know if you saw what I did here. I just hovered over. Oh, wait a minute. I took my own out of my own calendar. And actually, yes, you can remove your events from your view if you just want to see something else. There we go. If you hover over this where it says options, first of all, you can change it. You can change the color code for everything, or you can go in and just change the color code for something specific. 
If you have a lot of events to organize, you can color code based on what type of event it is. You can color code based on who did it. If you have a, a big team to manage and you want to see who's doing what, you can just assign a color to someone. Select event color. I can make this one tomato red. See, it changed that one, but not that one. And this is another good example. Amanda earlier, in preparation for this little exercise of ours, shared her Savannah events calendar with me. Now, my privileges for this are read only. I can't actually go in there and add any events or change them at all. All right, now here's this. I can see everything that's happening coming up. Like, ooh, bluegrass by the pint. I like bluegrass and I like pints. I'm going to copy this event to my calendar so that I too can get reminders. Ah! It's defaulting to that again, because I'm still signed in. Let's go to my calendar. I have a bunch of tabs open now, so it's taking its time. All right, bluegrass by the pint, again. Now that I'm adding it to my calendar, I can make changes, but I don't want to. I want to remember that it's at 6 o'clock. So there you go, save. And there it is. But what you can also do, let's say I want to share this entire thing with someone. I go to settings and sharing. OK. I have a question. What? You have a question. Um, Michael has a question for you. Oh, OK. Hang on a second. I'll finish this, and I'll go back okay. to that. All right. Calendar settings, whatever, whatever. All right. Share with specific people. All right, I'm the owner. I can add people. All right, let's just say I'm going to add Amanda since she's already in there. Okay, permissions. I can make it so she can see what's only free busy, hide details. She can see all event details. She can make changes. She can make changes and manage sharing. So if you're a supervisor, for example, you can make it so everyone who shares with you gives you managerial privileges. And I could send this to her, but I'm not going to, because there really isn't much to share. Now, this is a truly bizarre feeling. I'm fairly confident you all can hear me, but I feel kind of like I am talking into a vacuum because I can't hear anybody else. Sorry, did you prefer so, that we unmute everybody, Jeff? No, that's a, that's okay. It's just Amanda popped in the room just now and said they had a question. So I wanted to sort of stop talking and turn the floor back over to see if anyone else had anything they wanted to cover. Yeah, Matthew wanted to explain or clarify his question about Google calendars and the drop down uh -huh. boxes. Yeah, that was my question. Okay, go right ahead. So. What I had in mind was the calendar goes seven days a week, two shifts a day, and there's a choice of four people that could go in each day, like one person in the morning, one person in the evening. What I was looking to do was create a calendar where it runs seven days a week, two shifts per day, and inserting one of those four people in each shift. Ah, okay. Um, and just doing a drop down menu for efficiency instead of having to manually write someone's name each time. I was hoping that would. Okay. Um, I saw I could do it in uh, uh, sheets, but it doesn't look very graphically appealing. No, sheets, yeah, sheets is more of just for compiling information very yeah. helpful if you have to keep a lot of information in one place. Um, let me see if I, I follow you correctly here. Uh, you're talking about a workplace where maybe there are set, set shifts. Like for example, uh, can y'all st still see my screen? Is it still up? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Say the shift started at 11 
and went until seven. We'll make it a nice eight hour shift. Don't want to overwork anyone. Let's say the same, those same hours are worked by someone every day. Is that what you're saying? So like if you were the owner of this calendar, for example, you could call it first shift. And you could have it last for eight hours. Again, it defaults to does not repeat, but this happens every day, so you can make it daily. But the person may change right. from day to day in that shift. Um, I'm not sure there's a way to, to do it. Yeah, when I got your question, I did a little research, and I didn't find anything that allows you to add the drop down or any sort of this. selection. Uh, any any sort of thing where you can just preload, let's say you have four people on your team and one of the four is going to work every shift where you can just preload the drop down menu, kind of like you can in sheets, you mentioned sheets, right, you can do you, you can do that in a column where it's just a drop down. A drop down or some way that you could choose who goes in that shift for that day. Yeah, nothing I found nothing I found indicated that there's that option to do it within. Okay. Uh, the only thing I could think of is, you know, let's say you did this again, first shift, unless you change it, it's going to be daily, daily, daily. Only thing I could think of is this could be tedious, but just putting their name in there or color coding it. For example, like today's ship, today's. Actually, you know what? That would be a, a neat little exercise. Oh, edit record this event. Okay, wait a minute. I tried that. <laughs> okay. All right. So, like, one person is this color, one person is that color, one person is that color. Yeah, nothing, nothing I found indicated that there's that option at all. I can, I can see where that would be handy if you were doing this more for scheduling than, you know, event planning like that. Exactly. I'd be, it'd be interesting to see if other calendar apps had that. Because not everybody uses Google, for example. Google's great because you can share it with each other. Um, if you, Michael, for example, were in a managerial position, you could retain editorial privileges over all the calendars that are sh calendars that were shared with you by your team members but you could still see who did them so you could keep track of whose events they were yeah i downloaded a bunch of calendar apps today and went through them and there's nothing that really is simple to use that uh -huh. lets you just pop it right in yeah that's that's an interesting feature. That sounds like something if you were to tell Google, hey, they should do that. I can see them putting that in there sometime, mm -hmm. especially if it's if it's a recurring event like that where you're trying to schedule. I wish I could tell you better news. That's uh, no, I, I thought I'd ask the question. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting too because that that had just never come up for me before. I've used Google Calendar in the past just for personal stuff, um, especially back when the kids were. Uh, or younger and we had a lot of um, kid related stuff we had to plan and then remember I used it far more often than I did now now that are now that they're in, in uh, high school and middle school their schedules are a little more predictable as is mine because I work the same schedule they do uh, regarding any other apps that we just didn't mention at all was anyone curious about anything else Uh, you know how to how to embed a video, how to share stuff in Drive. Um, can you answer Joyce's question from earlier? I it, she's not on the call, but I'm sure she's going to be um, watching. 
Okay. Uh, refresh my memory. I'm sorry. What what was it? Joyce mentioned. Um, let me get back to that question. And she may have been the one to pose the question about Instagram, but let me. Let's see. I, let's oh, see. I just I I put that on a doc so I could remember uh, it. Yeah, she was the one that asked about the um the Instagram, like the oh. order form on Instagram. Okay. Um, yep. Turns out there is a way to do it. I've never done it before because I've never used Instagram, but um, it involves the the trigger and action feature that Instagram has. Okay. Uh, now, if we have anyone uh, joining us tonight who is well versed in Instagram. I would be more than happy to turn the floor over to them because my knowledge of Instagram is pretty much that it exists. Uh, I don't know if you want to cover that at another time. You know, maybe that's something for another meeting, how to, uh, how to integrate Google features into different social media apps. Um, yeah, I'm sure that's something that she's going to be interested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, again, you know, working in a school, that's not something I ever have to help a teacher do, you know, how to, <laughs> how to share something like that. That's all Google stuff and then the other apps that the district has us use. Um, have there been any other questions? Any raised hands? Curiosity? No, none. Okay. Because, um, I mean, there's just, there's so much you can cover. I took a Google boot camp last summer to get my certification. My reasoning was, hey, I'm at home anyway. We're not traveling anyway. I might as well do it now. And they just cover everything. And it's a great way to familiarize yourself, yourself with how they work. But then, of course, since then, I haven't really gotten to apply a lot of that because there's only so much I have to do at work on a given day. I don't necessarily have to create a website of my own every day. Um, nice thing is, if you ever wanted to play around in the sandbox, so to speak, if you ever wanted to, uh, where is it? Go to Google Slides, go to Google Sites, anything like that. It's, and just play around in it. It's totally private unless you opt to share it with someone. So you can play with how to embed videos and add pictures and stuff like that. But they make it very easy to share which is one of the great things about it. Unless you share to the and wrong person by accident. Unless you share to the wrong person, <laughs> yes. Which is, which is why um, when you go to share something, you have to manually type the address in, unless it's already in your contacts, but if they're already in your contacts, chances are it's someone you know and trust. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So yeah, yeah. And of course, unless you give them full editorial privileges, as long as you re remain the owner and the sole editor, you can withdraw their access at any time. So if you do send it to the wrong person and you realize your mistake, you can just rescind the access. Nice thing about Drive 2 is, let's go back to this. All right. Your Google Drive is, of course, private. Nobody can see it unless they're logged in as you. but Within your drive, you can share specific documents. You can make them public. I can go to this folder and just share the folder. If I wanted to, I could share this folder with everybody listening right now. I cannot do that because I don't have your email addresses. But within this folder is simply this one document, which is a copy of a calendar cheat sheet I found. And it's just little things like that, how to's. Mm. That's really helpful. In fact, if you'd like to, I can share this with you and then you can just forward it to everyone. Even if I don't want to share the entire folder, I can just share a specific document. That would be awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Like if you guys wanted the, um, my most excellent exit survey from earlier today, I could share that with you. And then as long as I didn't move it <laughs> or delete it, you could use it yourself. 
or you could just create your own and just share it with each other. And the great thing is also when it lets you, oh, wait a minute, where am I? <laughs> Actually, let's go, let's, yeah, let's go back to that. Calendar's not really what I need. Um, if I go to, yeah, so if I share the folder, anything I put in the folder gets shared with whomever the folder is shared with. Like if you see over here, shared with me, you see anything that anyone shared with me. Actually, these were things that I created in my other Google account and shared it with me today, like the calendar question, so that I would have them in this account. Uh, and that's another thing too. Um, in fact, you and I were talking about this uh, before the meeting started, how sometimes you have trouble you, you uh, doing something online because you try to do it under one login and it goes to the wrong place. Is, is that what you were saying? I, I forget how yeah, you it, it, it specifically. It happens um, almost daily because I do a lot of online shopping. Mm -hmm. And so it's constantly trying to default to my work email and I don't want it to go to my work email. Ah, okay. And um, so I, I don't know how I linked all of my emails to one place under Google, and now I don't know how to unlink them. Okay. Um, if you're dealing with anything third party, any any business's website where you have an account, you might just have to go and see what contact information they have for you. If it's something where you signed in with Google, because some sites will give you that option. Um, you need to make sure you're just signed in under the account you want it to be. Like, for example, I'm signed into Chrome under this master account. This is my default account. These other ones are simply linked. These are two personal accounts, and I have my son's linked as well because I help him with his homework. If you go to manage accounts, again, this is my master account here. I can remove these accounts. I've had to do this with students who have shared devices and have logged into their accounts on each other's devices. And all of a sudden, one of them's getting the other one's homework. Oh. Seeing emails that they shouldn't be seeing. So in some cases, I've had to go into their accounts to see what other accounts are linked. But let's gotcha. say I no longer wanted that. I could remove the account. That doesn't delete the oh. account. It just, it just removes it from that Google? Yep. Okay, then, okay. Yeah. Um, so regarding... Matthew has another question, Jeff. Sure, go ahead. Um, so he asked if you could touch on Google's security features. Ah, okay. Um, Well, let's see, let's see. Let's just go to this first of all. I'll go to manage your Google account. Now, again, this is my this is my district account. This is where you can personalize stuff. Because this is a work-based account, some of these features are managed centrally and I cannot change them. But if I go to security, first of all, I can see recent activity. I can see where I'm logged in because I use this account to log into other devices to help students. I can see everywhere I'm signed in, for example. This is the Chromebook I'm using. This is the Windows device that I have at, uh, at school. This is my desktop. This actually is a student device. If you go to manage devices, you can see everywhere you're logged in currently with this account. If you think somebody might be using your account without your permission, you can see everywhere you're logged in. If you see a device you don't recognize, there you go. This was actually a student device I logged into with this account earlier today. I no longer need to be logged into that device. Sign out. That removes access from that device. If somebody was using it, they are no longer using it. This is actually where you signed out. These are other devices that I've done the same thing with recently. So I have to deal with a lot of student devices. Now, these are just generic. Sometimes you'll see something like so-and-so's iPhone. 
So if you ever see something you don't recognize, if you're not sure, you can do more details. Again, it will always tell you, it'll check mark this device. You can sign out of this, but then that'll just shut everything down and I'll have to sign back in again. If you go to, let's see, we can go back to security. You can change your password if you'd like. Third party apps with account access. Right now, only it's learning is. But you can go here. You can see other apps you've used in the past, apps that perhaps you no longer need. You can rescind access. It's a good thing to keep track of if you use a lot of third party websites. Or if you use the sign in with Google feature at these other websites. In fact, that might have been why you were getting stuff sent to the wrong place if you signed into those things with Google. Um, without knowing more about the sites you were using, I couldn't tell you, but that could have something to do with it. Um, I've had to help teachers in the past who have been using their desktop computers at work. They log into the computer itself with their work account. Then they log into Chrome with a personal account. And then they're trying to use something district based within that and it's not working because they're not logged into Chrome with their district account. They're logged in to Chrome with one of these and it's their master account. I've had to show them how to switch it around, how to unlink them. So if you're having trouble with that, that might be something you need to check on your end. Um, there's a bunch of different security settings you can play with. Was there anything specific you were curious about within security? No, I, I just was, uh, you know, for everybody else's sake, I know when I log on to Google on one device, it defaults for me to go to the Google app on my phone mm -hmm. to verify. Uh, you're, you're talking about like um, two-step access? Yeah. Okay. Um, that's something you can turn off if you'd like. The, I mean, uh, all the all the tech gurus advise against turning that off just because there's an extra layer of protection, even though you have to go to your phone and enter the code they gave you. Um, really, that's up to you. Uh, but like on my phone, for example, I'm signed into Google with this account right here, because this is the account jmarks.business. This is the one I use for all my business accounts. Um, this is where I get my electric bills and stuff. This is my personal account that I just I use for family and whatnot. Um, let's see. But yeah, I mean, within that, you can choose with whom you share your stuff. You can create a family group. You can add people to contacts. Really, I don't use my personal work account for a lot of personal stuff, so you're really not going to see that here. Jeff, and this is our five-minute warning. Okay. Well, is there anything else you need to cover before we, we wrap up? Because I know I've just pretty much been, been talking myself this whole time. <laughs> I, I hope I've been... Uh, understandable and somewhat helpful, if nothing else. Absolutely. Uh, was there anything else you were curious about uh, with the little time we have left? Just the fact that I like Google Photos and it automatically backs up your mobile devices. Oh yeah, that's very helpful. Privacy is a, 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 an especially big deal if you use, you know, payment methods, for example. Again, I don't do anything like that with my work account, but if you have, if you're signed in through Google to anything with which you handle money, if you pay that way, that's when you really got to pay attention to your security features. Check every now and then, make sure you're not logged in somewhere where you shouldn't be. Um, especially if you use a, a public computer, if you use someone else's computer. Say you go to the library one time, use the computer there. You log into your Google account, you sign out, 
you come in here, it tells you you're still signed in. Doesn't necessarily mean someone can get at your account, but shutting it off from, from here ensures that the connection is permanently severed. But again, that's just scratching the surface. Um, let's see. Hey, what I'm going to unshare my screen. And I'll turn the floor back over to you. And we'll see if there's anything else that people are curious about in the time we have left. Oh, wait a minute. Was there anything else? There's so much we can do with this. I, it doesn't feel like it's been an hour. Is it almost eight o'clock? Yeah, it is. There is so much you can do with these things. If you're curious, I'd advise just playing around, just have fun with it. Again, nobody sees it but you unless you choose to share it with someone. So if you, if you, if you create a, an event invitation or an exit survey or anything like that and it stinks, you can edit it, you can delete it, you can pretend it never happened. And then of course- So that, that sandbox it, is just available on the Google, like it shows up as a sandbox? Um, actually, yeah, again, um, what I can do, just a moment. I'm going to share my screen again. All right, and then Just going to open up a new tab. All right. And really, it doesn't matter which account I'm using right now because, once again, you go to the little Google app waffle, everybody gets these, regardless of whether you ever use them or even know they exist. Everybody gets Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Slides, which is sort of their equivalent of PowerPoint. Everyone gets a calendar. Everyone gets the ability to use the chat feature. Everybody can schedule a Google Meet, which is their equivalent of Zoom. Everyone can make a form. Everyone can create a little site. That's a little Google website feature. There's a whole lot you can do with that. And again, like any other Google app, you can share that the same way with people. Um, but yeah, it's really just like playing in a sandbox. As you know, YouTube is now part of the vast Google machine, so you can embed any YouTube video in a, f in a form, for example, in a party invitation. But it all takes place within your account, so until you put it out there, nobody sees it. And then, of course, if you ever have to do something for official work purposes, I'm going to stop sharing my screen again. You can create it and just share it with a trusted friend or colleague. Have them fill it out, see if it comes back to you the way it needs to. It can give you aesthetic feedback. Amanda's the artist. If something looks bad, aesthetically, eh, she can give you feedback. She also has her hand up. Oh, I do, yeah. I actually have a question. Um, <laughs> okay. So, I use um, Google Voice, which is, if you're not familiar with Google Voice, it's a chat feature. It gives you a phone number that is not my cell phone, but I send chat or text to guests um, through Google Voice and you can enable it on your desktop and you can communicate that way. Um, my question is, is can I like link it? it to I know I can link it to my phone but is there a way that I can have like a voicemail that comes up that is not my voicemail on Google Voice that is a good question <laughs> um, I've never used Google Voice that's a feature I know exists because well, I've it's heard awesome. you mention it, but again, um, 
because the boot camp I took yes. and the training was from the educator standpoint, they focused on stuff you need to do in school. And that's not one of them. Okay. So that is something that's something I would have to research. Uh, I, okay. I, I, do I was just curious to, her to give her the answer. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and if you go to that little Google waffle, what mm -hmm. first comes up are the basic apps, docs, Gmail, Drive, stuff that a lot of people use. But if you go down to the bottom, click a little more from Google link, you will see things you've never heard of before, don't know what they are. It offers a lot. Um, even the training I took last summer, I'm sure barely scratched the surface. And my certification is only level one. There's level two. You can become a certified trainer where you can do meetings like this for hundreds of people. I guess stuff like this is practice if I ever wanted to go that route. There you and go. I hope, this, I hope this was at least somewhat helpful because I've never done this before. I've been in my share of Zoom meetings, of course, as we all have, but only as a participant. It was super helpful. And we are so very grateful to you, Jeff, for carving out this hour of time for us and just being so amenable to the, the questions and multiple questions. Yeah, I'm glad to do it. Thank you, Amanda, for volunteering him. Yeah, you know, that's that's what <laughs> I do. <laughs> she told me this like two months ago, though, so I had plenty of heads up. You're right, uh, right. Now she told me today, yeah. <laughs> I told my boss at work I was doing this today, too. She was very happy for me because she had been wanting me to get my Google certification. So... There you go. Now you have validation. I get, to, I get to apply it a little bit tonight. Good. All right. Well, we are going to sign off for tonight. Um, look for the next installment of the NCA Education Committee Presents um, in August. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Thanks, Jeff.